dalam ROV control room bersama dengan ROV supervisor Arvi hello Vic hi guys so uh, Vicky I'm the ROV supervisor so currently uh, what we have on board of a DSV Pioneer is a world class electrical ROV it's a Merlin WR200 so basically if you look at uh, the screen uh, this is the screen of the uh, cameras that we have on the ROVs so basically these cameras are the eyes for the ROVs so these are the only reference that we could uh, use to fly the ROV around our job site and also we have a sauna okay let's switch on the sauna and show you guys so basically uh, sauna is uh, like what we have in the submarines as well so sauna is a sound wave so it will actually give us a 2D image of uh, any obstructions or any objects in uh, in the sea before we could even uh, see it. Uh, we have a range about we can go up to 100 meters, and uh, we will detect in sonar first. As we go closer, then uh, we will have a real view on the camera. Okay, as so you can see, the sonar is uh, sweeping now. But now at the moment, uh, the ROV is on the deck. We are not in the water, so we, we are not able to see much look at here uh, these are the, the control uh, SCADA systems for the ROV can show us the heading of the ROV and then uh, since it's an electrical ROV and uh, each and every motors we have uh, uh, monitoring of uh, our line insulations and uh, the leakage of the current okay. and this is the control system of the ROV and, uh, this is basically a, a human media interface HMI it's a touch screen so Basically from here we can able to control the ROV, we can control the lights, we can control the cameras, whatever cameras we have, then uh, we can even uh, control the thrusters, all the eight thrusters and then the, all the sensors that we hooked it up, we have uh, all the altimeters, transponders, we have uh, manipulators as seven function, we are using a T4, shilling T4, so this is the, uh, the master controller of the arm that we're gonna we are using it's actually a shilling robotics it's a seven function it's basically work like a human arm so it has all the seven functions as you can see so whatever movement we give here it will be the same on the subsea so the the robot arm will do the same movement that we are giving on the stop side yeah the, the other arm will be uh, it's a five function arm it's actually a controlled by uh, the joystick here Show you guys on the screen. Okay, we are using a we take a five function as you can see. It's a pretty uh, heavy duty uh, arm that we have. This is the five function on the port side of the ROV. Then, uh, if you look at the uh, starboard side, is the Titan 4 shilling robotics. It's a seven function. It uh, has an integrate. I mean, we, we added uh, a pencil camera, especially for this operation with the integrated LED light. So, which we will use to monitor our whichever latch indicators on the BOP or even uh, to check on the uh, bullseye readings. And uh, we also added an uh, extra and uh, 90 degree angle camera. Uh, this especially for bullseye as well. So the, oh, this camera okay. is a 90, uh, 90 degree angle looking down so that our bullseye reading will be uh, okay. direct vertically down to have a precision uh, measurement. Okay, five, uh, seven function is more like a human arm. So it have more flexible joints. We have uh, seven joints. And uh, for five function, basically it's like a, we, we count like this. One function on the left, right. Up, down, one function. Extend, retract, one function. Rotate one function and open close jaw one function as five function. Okay. For this, it has a uh, seven functions. So basically, Chinese uh, need. If you look at this, this is one function. Then uh, up and down one function. Here, 
there's a flex joint then on the left uh, your okay, we have a flex joint we rotate and that's the difference uh, usually in a ship we have three main team so basically uh, during uh, launching and recovery of the ROV uh, two person will be on the deck one will be a winchman will be controlling the winch then one more will, uh, one person will be a watch keeper he will be watching what's surrounding and guiding the winchman and then the usually the supervisor will be inside the control van to monitor the launching of the, and the recovering of the ROV basically we will also ally us with the bridge via and on also the deck via clear communication here as a unit here there's a clear comms that we are using and uh, we also have a talkie that's uh, like yeah. a second way of communication and also we have a phone here okay. that's another third way of uh, communication yeah. and since uh, this system is we are using a fiber optic yeah. the communication is via fiber optic so we have a special fiber optic uh, 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 mux we call a multiplexer so this is the one which con converts the fiber optic to all the video signals and all the data signals that, that we receive. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is a we call is a pilot pilot chair. Yeah. It's a this more like a more luxury version of a pilot chair compared to the uh, conventional we sit on the on a chair and uh, it will be on you know on no a desk. Mind. Yeah, this is uh, a totally integrated the pilot chair with everything built into the pilot chair. So basically. This uh, this stick is controls the uh, controls of the ROV, and the ROV is uh, need to go forward, need to go reverse, turn clockwise, counter clock, go up and down, including the camera pan and tail. It's all controlled by here. Yeah. This unit. If I move this, the camera will go up and down. Yeah. So these are the the main function, and we have our station keeping functions here as well. When we press this, the ROV will be in the same heading okay. and the same, we can choose the same altitude. So when you press that, the ROV can maintain the position. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. from all the sensors, it uh, receives the feedback and then we'll try to maintain the position. Mm -hmm. We have a, a fiber optic a gyroscope, which shows the heading. Then uh, for the depth sensor, we have uh, DG quads. Then for altitude, we are using altimeter. So these are the main three sensors that uh, will keep the ROV uh, in the position and also to guide us uh, where to go because in the water okay. when we turn around everything is same yeah. so we will have, won't have a guide so the gyro will be the main uh, reference and at the same time the sonar will be another reference for us. Yeah. Okay. The CDC is basically uh, your thrusters, your thrusters commands so if I go forward Truster will show how many per percentage my cluster is going forward. So basically, this is a SCADA system where it will show us uh, feedback of the trusters mm. or propellers that are running. We have total eight uh, trusters in okay. ROV. ROV spread will have uh, a control van, which is uh, we are where we are now. Then we will have uh, a store container, a workshop, and uh, this system, since it's a fully electrical system. We have a transformer container which is full of transformers and inverters. So basically, they are the brains that controls the thrusters since yeah. it's a full electrical ROV. So we will have a transformer container. Then we have a LARS which is a launching and recovery system. There is a, a consists of a winch which we have a main lift wires umbilical, mm -hmm. and then a deck to launch and recover the ROVs and that's why we will place the ROV and the TMS together yeah, we can walk you about on the uh, leg to show okay. what's happening there okay, let's go yeah. uh, this is our sub-engineer Maran okay. so basically uh, he's wearing his comms so that comms will use to communicate with the control van and then uh, he will be guiding me from uh, outside to tell me what's happening outside so when we do the deck check and everything, they will be the person who in charge of the deck. Even the launching and recovery, they will be the person in charge. So when I'm inside, I have to listen to their command. Okay, this is a work class ROV. It's a WR200, a Merlin WR work ROV, 200 horsepower. It uh, comes with a TMS, a tether management system. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is a. Uh, mainly built for deep water projects so it can go as deep as uh, 3000 meters 
Yep. Uh, this is the main lift for you.
hydraulic coolings like which a top tool we use uh, subsea top tool okay. uh, like uh, uh, gasket a ax vx gasket removal tools it's okay. all uh, hydraulically operated okay so in order to run that we are using hydraulic i can show you the, okay. the, the connectors like Quick connects. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are for the two links that we will be using. Just connect to that uh, port, lah. Yes, correct. Oh. This for the two links. Kalau if let's say we have uh, one tools coming in like AX VX, we just plug it in oh. and we can operate from inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Good button from. Correct. Correct. We have all controls on that. Okay. And the systems we always put anodes. Oh, okay. To prevent. Uh, Parts. Okay, so basically the A-frame, uh, it's it's part of the launching and recovery system. So it, they are in charge of uh, going, bringing the ROV outboard, overboard, and uh, dropping in the water, and also recovering it back safely on deck. It's called a wireless cavotech control for the winch and last. This function is for the winch in and out where it pays out uh, the main umbilical and this one is to pay out uh, to play with your airframes inboard and outboard this one is for your belly legs to extend the legs to give you more free play when you outboarding and this is for the trolley so you can bring, bring in the trolley oh, in and out to see your distance you want to keep it further, further away or further in and this is called a uh, wireless uh, belly pack or cable tech. Oh, yes. Cable tech comes from the brand name. So a lot of companies use this for launching and recovery. So, so in case of this failure, this yeah. yeah, we have a manual control on the sticks. Same same function as this. Whatever we have here, we have it here. Oh. Just in case the uh, wireless fails. So this only is a winch. Yeah, a winch. A winch. So this control stand, controls. We control the winch. As well as the A-frame glass, two wheel, two mount. Right. So, and this whole thing is powered up by the HPU. Yeah. This is where the power and hydraulics come from. You have two two pumps running, the motor one and motor two. So you can either run both pumps at the same time or either one at, at, at any given time. So it's HPU for the yes, last. HPU for the whole last. Power comes from there, your hydraulic comes from there, your control comes from there. That's the generator, that's our backup power supply. Oh. So now currently we are running on uh, vessel vessel power. It's giving us giving us three phase for 40 volts. Okay. In case of any breakdown from supply from the vessel, this will be our backup. Right. So now we're gonna commence uh, uh, deck check. Uh, so this is this deck check. We do it uh, every time before we launch the ROV and also after we uh, recover the ROV just to make sure the ROV is in good condition prior for going to the subsea and after coming up so we also have a checklist here okay so every time uh, when the the, the, the sub edge or the pilot on the winch on the deck they do a they, 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 we do a deck check so they will put a pre and post dive checklist they will fill up all this and then they will make a remark there. Okay, our system is up and running. This is our lead supervisor okay. on this operation. Hi, I'm Hi. Right. So now we're going to commence a, a full uh, deck check. We're going to test the seven function manipulator now. Okay. Okay. Third. So usually the pilot will be doing the five function, or sometimes co-pilot also can do. So yes. the beauty about this system is, uh, we can just take over everything from here. The, con the command now let's say the pilot is doing that so we say okay but he said okay take over guys i'm yeah. going for a coffee break then we just switch on here then we take over the control yeah. so the, the control is like okay yeah. chair one chair two and also while flying pilot hold the flying stick rov control so for pilot will uh, handle the seven function while operation going on oh. during the wing valve and uh, sub functions okay so we're gonna demo to you guys on the uh, seven function so basically this is the master control unit the the, the arm that we are using is a shilling t4 so i'm gonna show you how the arm is uh working okay. according Online. to the command okay uh which man we're gonna switch on the seven function okay okay 
So I'm gonna show you guys on the here. We have a one camera integrated on the T4. I mean, I installed on the T4. So we're gonna show it with the T4 and also the T4 camera. Okay, coming up on the sound function. Start moving according to my arm. The, the moment I move my arm, it's going here left. Uh, sorry, right. Going left. Just replicate the. Correct. Mm. It will follow. Yes, it's like the flex joint. Eh? Almost no delay. Correct. Yes, yes, there's no delay. It's all uh, run by fiber optics. Okay. So, uh, stay clear, Mr. Maran. Yeah, I can see uh, Maran's face. Okay, I'm gonna open the jaw. Yep. Close the jaw. Okay, all the function has been tested. But how, when opening and closing the jaw, how how do you know how much force do you need? Uh, okay. it's okay. Basically, uh, it's by we have to go by feeling lah. Oh, okay. So we, we have to go bit by bit. Then, okay, right. then we pick it up. Then. Usually, if if a job requires the, us to handle uh, gentle items, uh, we have to have a special uh, soft jaws in order. Let's say I'm doing uh, like a fish uh, documentary or whichever collecting of any subsea equipment. So we might have a special uh, depending on the job scope lah. Stone. You will have. Uh, Three operations, for example, like I give an example of FMC. You wanna open the valve and close. They will have they their own uh, uh, valve overriding tool. Zero. So the 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 jaw will be holding that tool. Then we use that tool to open or close the uh, their valves. So it, that tool will have like a tensile bolt connected. So in case of uh, the torque is over yeah. the the breaking torque of the valve, the tool will break first. Mm -hmm. It won't break the valve. It's a, like a protection, like a fuse bolt, we call it. Um, they have done the test. So I'll give this form to the our deck guys. So they will uh, click whichever, they will go around the RV, whichever uh, necessary, we will go through all the checklist. Then we'll take, make sure the RV is good before we're going off track. Okay. Um, pilot is a mechanical background or electrical electronics background, or robotic, megatronics. So all involved. And uh, we start with a uh, trainee pilot, and then uh, pilot tech one, two, three, four. Sorry, four, three, two, one, and senior pilot tech, then sub engineer, senior sub engineer, then come the supervisor one, then lead supervisor, and ROE superintendent. Yes, that's how they are ranking given. And then we are collecting flying hours and in car lock movement. Okay. So we uh, yeah. show you the book. once uh, you are in now uh, the industry. Uh, first, this will be your passport to uh, yes. your ROV career, la, your career. Okay. So this is your, I would say this is my rice bowl. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have your photos, mm -hmm. you'll have all your details, then uh, you'll have all your endorsements, your opito, your bossiets. Okay. So then you just flip through, then the rest will be your, your work uh, histories. Mm -hmm. So how you started. And uh, all this, then as you can see, we have our flying hours as how uh, Ganesan mentioned. We will accumulate our flying hours. So, we like to accumulate. So, we just like each job we go, how many flying hours we get. Sometimes we don't get flying hours because oh. you don't go on the stick, you okay. don't get it. Okay, so that one we will be particular la, because we don't want to uh, manipulate your flying hours. This is like our license. Okay. So as you grow, as you collect more and more, then your flying hours will be accumulated, like 700. Yeah, about that. So this is your proof, utmost yeah. proof, to to your competency. And I can show our we our competencies as That's well. Exactly the same like the aeroplane pilots and uh, chopper pilots oh. also. They uh, accumulate flying hours. For in-house uh, certificate, because I came subsea, we are ROE manufacturers, okay. so. As RV manufacturer, they will give us our internal assessment. So oh. we have our own uh, internal assessment packages. So in order for you to step up from pilot to become a senior pilot and become a sub engineer, you have to do all your assessments. Oh. So you have to go through one by one. Then uh, you will be awarded 
once you are competent you will be awarded your certificate and uh, yeah the certificate will looks like this yeah. this is a in house icam certificate since we are icam is a rov manufacturer this is our home rov okay. our own rov yes. so we manufacture our own rov Mm -hmm. This is actually a fourth generation ROV. Okay. Yeah, we, we, that's what we call a fourth generation yes. ROV. Fourth it's generation. A electrical, fully electrical propulsion. So it's using electrical uh, motors, electrical uh, thrusters to run the show. Mm -hmm. So why uh, in Norway? Uh, I mean, in, throughout the world, even in Malaysia, we are concerned. Yeah. Correct. We are we are concerned about our environment. Okay. So same goes to in Norway. They Genie are very price. concerned about the environment. So that's why. We are trying to go as much as electrical as possible okay. to basically oil leak. Correct. Imagine the oil leak in the uh, sea and ocean. Correct. To yeah. protect the marine lives. Correct. Yeah. How about in terms of performance and uh, reliability? But they, I think they are almost they are around the same. Yeah. Okay. Reliability. You talk about electrical system. You can um, stay more days in the water oh. because. Uh, all the uh, thrusters run on the electric motors, so uh, you don't need to top up the oil very often. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we don't use uh, manipulators and toolings, yeah. toolings and manipulators go to hydraulics. Yeah. They go individual pumps and motor yes. HPU. If for operation, for inspection and survey, we use electrical motors. So sometimes we can fly the system without recovery for one two weeks mm. and one of the longest thing in the water they tested in Norway yeah, yeah. 50, uh,